in high school, of course, I was always interested in airplanes. And, uh, you know, I, I saw, I think I saw some commercials on TV for Wyotech across the way. And um, I thought about it, and my father was a private pilot. He just had his license, and we used to go flying every once in a while. And I always liked airplanes. I always loved going to air shows and stuff like that. So we, uh, we looked into it when I was ready. You know, I was thinking about debating college and stuff like that, and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, you know, I get probably like, you know, I'm in the C range as far as grades go, and I'm like, I was sick of school. I wanted to get out of there, you know? And uh, I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, you know, you know, the aircraft mechanic thing looked pretty cool, and um, I know you could, you know, they were advertising you could make a great career out of it. So I checked it out, and uh, it seemed like it was a perfect fit, because I always loved tinkering in the garage, you know, with cars and whatnot, and uh, it was definitely a, a good fit. Love airplanes, love working on stuff, so you put the two together, and what do you get is an aircraft mechanic, so <laughs> that's what I did. I love it. It's really a lot of fun, and it's challenging, too, and it's always something different every day. <laughs> Every airplane's set up just a little bit differently because they're all handmade. Where cars is a lot of machines and they're all exactly the same, whereas airplanes are pretty much built by hand. So you get a lot of different techniques that people use. I mean, they're all generally the same, but there's a lot of different models and variations on engines. And we have to do a lot of uh, taking of, like when we do an engine change, we have to take a lot of pictures so we can see exactly where everything went back together. If you were working at a dealership, which I also did, you know, for a little while, I was very repetitive, you know, you're doing oil changes and brake jobs constantly, and it got really monotonous and boring. Whereas in here, if you do an oil change or a brake job, it's on a different type of an airplane every single time in a place like this. You're working on something different every day. It's never the same, so it's always a little bit of a challenge to figure out how something comes apart or how it goes back together. It's like a constant learning curve. Even people 25, 30 years are still learning stuff to this day because they're coming out with all these new things. It's a, you know, it's basically all this leading edge technology is in these things. I mean, it's insane. So you're, every, it's like the computer industry. I mean, it's always changing. Well, what we do is um, we're a global um, charter and service company. Um, we basically take care of people's airplanes as far as maintenance. Um, we'll do completions, uh, not here but at other facilities like someone will buy an airplane. And the airplane, when you buy one, it comes completely stripped. There's like nothing to it but the engines and whatever you chose for maybe avionics. And sometimes even the avionics packages aren't in there, which is all the computers and the instrumentation and all that stuff. So what they do is they basically come from the manufacturer completely stripped and then they come to a company like us to complete it. We put in the seats, the interiors, the carpets. Um, people pick out exactly what they want, you know, as far as different types of leather and velours and all this and buckles and, you know, seat belt buckles and all that. I mean, some of the, these interiors are absolutely incredible. I mean, we have carpets that are priceless. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't think they'd put, you know, a $25,000 carpet and, you know, this little airplane, but, it ha you know, they just, they want the best. <laughs> These guys come in and they, uh, they take like a piece of carpet and they bind it in like 8,000 different directions to go around all these different fixtures and they make it look like a totally different airplane. It's really, it's something else. It's incredible craftsmanship, but there's many different areas you can specialize in and then you can be just a general mechanic, which is what I was, doing a little bit of everything, like a cabinet breaks, you fix it, or a tire goes flat, you change it, or something like that, whereas there's also other areas where you can get really specific. You can just be a sheet metal guy and do sheet metal all the time, um, which is interesting, or composite work, airframe work, um, depending on what you like to do, you know, and it's good to start out as like a general mechanic, because then you can find out what you want to do. I still love wrenching. I mean, I'll never get away from that. I love fixing things. Anything to do with an engine or uh, anything mechanical, I just love getting into. Uh, I had a great experience at school there, over at Wyotech there, and um, it, was, it was unlike anything I would have ever thought. It was basically about 50% hands-on, kind of like a regular um, 
you know, vocational school, like 50% hands-on, 50% classwork. And uh, it's a really great way of learning. Uh, some of my friends from high school that went to college, um, I almost feel like I got one up on them now because they're just struggling to find a job or this and that, and some of them don't even have jobs. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's too bad, really. And they went to college and they spent all this money and they're having a really hard time. And I'm like, it just blew me away because I come out and, you know, I'm making decent money. I got a great job. It's like, boy, you guys really screwed up. But they didn't. <laughs> they did. They just followed the crowd, basically. And I kind of broke off a little bit. But um, sometimes it, it's worth taking a little chance, too, you know. Uh, yeah, an incident that happened here, there was an aircraft that came in. Um, and actually flew through, they descended through a flock of Canadian geese. The airplane looked like it went, like, it, uh, basically someone took a bat to every square inch of the airplane. I mean, like, they, it looked like someone just beat the heck out of it with a bat. Um, it, I mean, it went through a whole flock. It must have got hit by four or five birds. And one went completely through the engine, um, which you can imagine made an insane mess. <laughs> um, basically a jet engine is like a giant Cuisinart, so <laughs> you can only imagine. <laughs> it was still fly. It flew in. Everyone came in, made it safely. The engine stayed running, which I can't believe. One of the uh, cowlings from the engine, the cover, engine cover was completely ripped off. Um, but. I give all you know some serious credit to those engineers because that thing held together <laughs> and it took a beating and it flew it landed everything worked and that was that was an interesting incident <laughs> that was uh, it's rare it doesn't happen very often and we're all like we were shocked when the airplane rolled in like what happened to this thing you know <laughs> there's like feathers all sticking out of it and oh it was unbelievable another interesting thing is uh, you know a lot of the um, the corporate people like to have carpets, red carpets rolled out in front of their doors. And with jet engines, they like to suck in a large volume of air when they're running. And sometimes the wind tends to pick up the carpets, and the carpets like to go through the engines. And that's happened a few times, um, accidentally. Uh, and uh, that's usually good for an engine oh, uh, change, you know. <laughs> it sucks in a carpet, and it, next thing you know, you, there is just the ramp goes from nice to red dust everywhere in a matter of a second. It just poof, and those things. There's nothing left of that carpet. It comes out in about eight billion pieces. <laughs> but uh, that's that's usually. It's not funny, but it is at the same time. <laughs> I don't know when like, they walk out. I mean, plane. I know everybody's like, "What happened?" You know, it's just where'd the carpet go? <laughs> the the best part of the whole job is. Um, actually like running an engine after you've worked on it because we always have to check everything check all the parameters make sure everything's you know it's producing enough power to get the airplane off the ground and um, make sure everything's working correctly and that's a lot of fun getting out there on the ramp and you know putting the engines full power and then everything starts shaking you know <laughs> that's a lot of fun um, and if you have your license you could actually fly some of the smaller ones um, with the owners, you know, sometimes the owners like, um, you know, a mechanic to go up up with them and just they feel a little more secure, you know. Well, if the mechanic's going to fly on it, you know, I feel confident that he did a good job. I would tell them if they're interested in um, in anything to do with uh, electronics, computers, fixing, you know, just regular mechanical stuff. There's so many different ends of this field; it's incredible. Um, anybody who's interested in anything like that um, should definitely check it out and should definitely, um, you know, get into it in some way or another because it's really, it's really in demand and it's doing nothing but growing. This industry is like doubling every time you turn your head and uh, it's, you know, the earlier you get in the better and, uh, you know, the more experience you'll gain and the more valuable you'll be and so on. And it's, you know, after that, especially if you love doing it.